Yeah, I think we can move to the next part, which is the Audible challenge. We would be listening to a audio clip from an Audible book, and we will be also answering a few questions. So yeah, let's listen to the clip. Carl Selig steadied himself on the ship's rail and peered through the binoculars at the massive iceberg. Near the center of the iceberg, another piece of ice crumbled and fell away, revealing more of the long black object it had covered. It looked almost like a submarine, but it couldn't be. Hey, Steve, come check this out. Steve Cooper, Carl's grad school friend, tied off a buoy and joined Carl on the other side of the boat. He took the binoculars, scanned quickly, then stopped. Whoa, what is it? A sub? Maybe. What's under it? Carl grabbed the binoculars. Under it? He panned to the area under the sub. There was something else. The sub, if it was a sub, was sticking out of another metallic object. This one gray and much, much larger than the sub. But unlike the sub, the gray object didn't reflect any light. It looked more like waves, the kind that shimmer just over the horizon of a warm highway or a long stretch of desert. It wasn't warm, though, or at least it wasn't melting the ice around it. Just above the structure, Carl caught a glimpse of some writing on the sub. U-977 and SS Kriegsmarine. A Nazi sub, sticking out of a structure of some sort. Carl dropped the binoculars to his side. Wake Naomi up and prepare to dock the boat. We're going to check it out. Steve rushed below deck and Carl heard him rousing Naomi from one of the small boat's two cabins. Carl's corporate sponsor had insisted he take Naomi along. Carl had nodded in the meeting and hoped she wouldn't get in the way. He had not been disappointed. When they had put to sea five weeks ago in Cape Town, South Africa, Naomi had brought aboard two changes of clothes, three romance novels, and enough vodka to kill a Russian army. They had barely seen her since. It must be so boring for her out here, Carl thought. For him, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. Carl raised the binoculars and looked again at the massive piece of ice that had broken off from Antarctica nearly a month ago. Almost 90% of the iceberg was underwater, but the surface area still covered 47 square miles, one and a half times the size of Manhattan. Carl's doctoral thesis focused on how newly halved icebergs affected global sea currents as they dissolved. Over the last four weeks, he and Steve had deployed high-tech buoys around the iceberg that measured sea temp and saltwater freshwater balance, as well as took periodic sonar readings of the iceberg's changing shape. The goal was to learn more about how icebergs disintegrated after leaving Antarctica. Antarctica held 90% of the world's ice, and when it melted in the next few centuries, it would dramatically change the world. He hoped his research would shed light on exactly how. Carl had called Steve the minute he found out he was funded. You've got to come with me. No, trust me. Steve had reluctantly agreed, and to Carl's delight, his old friend had come alive on the expedition as they took readings by day and discussed the preliminary findings each night. Before the voyage, Steve's academic career had been as listless as the iceberg they were following, as he floated from one thesis topic to another. Carl and their other friends had wondered if he would drop out of the doctoral program altogether. The research readings had been intriguing, and now they had found something else. Something remarkable. There would be headlines, but what would they say? Nazi sub found in Antarctica? It wasn't inconceivable. Carl knew the Nazis had been obsessed with Antarctica. They'd sent expeditions there in 1938 and 1939, and even claimed part of the continent as a new German province, Neuschwabenland. Aben. And that was the audio clip. So the questions are, 
Iceberg is a large floating mass of wood detached from a glacier or wood sheet and carried out to sea. So it is a yes or no question. Uh, second, a sub means A, submarine, B, substitute, C, supplement, and D, all choices are wrong. And the third question is, enough vodka to, co to kill a Russian army mean means A, a lot of vodkas, B, the vodka was poisonous, C, a small amount of vodka. So let's see what the audience thinks. Okay, so the results are in. Um, the second question, uh, sorry, the first question, uh, yes wins by 54%. And the second question, uh, A wins by 56%. Uh, and the third question, also A wins by 56%. So let's go to our instructors. Maybe we can start with Alex. Yes, so um, the first question is very tricky. I would say the answer is no because an iceberg is made of ice. Uh, the second, uh, the second question I say is submarine because they uh, they mentioned that uh, the the thing they saw it might be a submarine, an easy submarine. And at the third question, uh, I would say that um, that saying is like a lot of vodka. That uh, they said that the the woman bought a lot of vodka to the on board. Uh, yeah. Um. I'd have to, I, on the first one, I can't uh, agree with the majority because a, an iceberg is not a f large floating mass of wood. It's a large floating mass of ice. Um, uh, so I'd say no on the first question. A sub does mean subber submarine, or at least in this, it does. Um, sub can mean substitute and, and uh, other things, but in this uh, certain activity it would mean submarine uh depending on like the plot and where it is and enough vodka to kill a russian army would mean a lot of vodkas because i know a lot of russians can drink multiple multiple shots of vodka and not make a single face so uh you'd have to have a a whole ton of vodka to kill a russian army yeah. i like i like yusuf uh last uh, last comment uh, on the question, uh, and I'm with um, with the first with uh, no for the first question. Uh, I don't know. I don't agree with the majority. And for the second, they mentioned that sub is the submarine, and uh, enough vodka uh, is a lot of vodka. I think that's my answer. And I would have to say for question one, um, I disagree with the majority. Um, an iceberg is a large floating mass of ice detached and not wood. So that was a tricky, I guess, part of the question here. But the answer is no. A sub means in this context means submarine. And then enough vodka, as uh, Yusuf's funny comment mentioned, means a lot of uh, vodkas. I also do agree with our instructors uh, for the first two questions. And I really enjoyed this Yusuf comment. That was very nice. Yeah. I agree with everyone else as well. Um, for question two there, of course, the context is important since we know from the beginning that the characters are out at sea somewhere, that it makes more sense that a sub is a submarine in this case. Okay, I would say that for the second question, they mentioned like maybe two or three times submarine, submarine, and not mentioning the, the other choices. So I would go for submarine. And the last one, um, uh, they, he mentioned like something like he bought uh, clothes and three, no uh, three novels, I think, and a lot of uh, vodka. So the first one will be... Um, also, no, I would agree with the instructors, so. Yeah, this was a very fun discussion, to be honest. Yusuf, your comment at the end had everyone laughing, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I think we can move on to the next part, which I believe is the to TOEFL part. Uh, so, yeah, we would be also listening to a clip and answering a question. So, let's go. Hi, are you Paula? Jim? Hi, nice to meet you. Glad to meet you. So, you need some tutoring in English? 
Yeah, I'm taking English composition, and I'm not doing very well on my essays. <laughs> right. Um. Well, first, let's see if we can figure out a time to meet that we're both free. Okay. How about Mondays? Maybe in the morning. I don't have any classes until eleven on Mondays. That'd work. But I was hoping we could, you know, meet more than once a week. Oh, well, Tuesdays are out. I've got classes, and、uh, I work at the library part time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But I could get together on Wednesdays. In the morning? Probably nine thirty would be best. That way, we'd have an hour to work before I'd have to get ready for my eleven o'clock. So that would be two hours a week then. I could do that. Oh, but would that be extra? You know, would I need to pay you for the extra session? No. Um, just so you meet me here at the learning center and we both sign in, then I'll get paid. Tutoring's free to you. I mean, the school pays me, but we both have to show up. If you don't show up and sign in for a session, then I don't get paid. So. Oh, don't worry about that. I really need the help. I won't miss any sessions unless I'm sick or something. Okay then. So you want me to help you with your essays? Right. I could bring you some that have, you know, comments on them. I'm getting C's and. Well, that's not too bad. Once I see some of your writing, we should be able to pull that up to a B. You think so? Sure. But I need to explain something. Some of my students in the past, they expected me to write their essays for them, but that's not what a tutor's supposed to do. My job is to help you be a better writer. Oh, I understand that. But you'll read my essays, right? Oh yeah, no problem. We'll read them together, and I'll make suggestions. Great. I think part of the problem is I just don't understand the teacher's comments. Maybe you could help me figure them out. Sure. Who's the teacher? Simpson. No problem. I've tutored a couple of her students, so I know more or less where she's coming from. Okay then. I guess we'll meet here on Monday. I'll be here. Nine thirty, you said. Just sign in when you get here. Okay, so the questions are: Paula and Jim will meet on Tuesday. It's a yes or no question, and then the second question is: Paula will pay Jim in cash. Again, it is a yes or no question. So let's see what the audience thinks, and we can then move on to the instructors. So yeah, the results are in. No wins by seventy-four percent for the first question. And no wins again by sixty-eight、uh, percent this time for the second question. So yeah, let's see what our instructors think.、Uh, I would most definitely agree.、Uh, well, I would agree with the first one because they did say that they will meet on Tuesday. And、um, wait, hold on, no, 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 sorry. Oh, what, they said they meet on two days,、um, and now I'm starting to forget which days.、Uh, but they said they meet on two days.、Um, And either way, this only states one day, so that this would be、um, a no. The first question, and、um, on two, I think it's an also it's also a no, or maybe it's a yes. I'm I'm not sure. I I got a little confused. I didn't hear the the second question very well. Yeah. So on the first question, I agree that、uh, the answer is uh, no. Uh, They, I think they said they will meet on Mondays and、uh, Wednesdays.、Um, then on the second question,、uh, Paula, you know, is not going to pay Jim cash. So the, they, like the answer is no. I think、uh, they said that it was free as long as she shows up to that center and, and like in the school pays for it. So, so the answer is no to, to question two. Um, yeah, so, is Mr. Host, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Host, because in the first question they said they are gonna they can meet only on Monday and Wednesday because Jim is working on Tuesday and Thursday. So the question,、uh, first question is no, and the second question, yeah,、uh, I again agree because、um, Paul is not paying anything because the school is gonna pay. She just need to attend. Sorry, Amaya. Don't worry. So、uh, I go with the majority's answers, and、uh, definitely it's no. Uh, for both. That's.、So. I agree with everyone too on this. Both questions. The answer is no. I agree as well. Yes, I also agree. Okay, so 
I see like everyone is agreeing on this uh, part, at least of the session. Uh, and I guess we can move to sample two of the TOEFL part. So yeah, let's hear the audio clip. Listen to a lecture in a music appreciation class. The professor is talking about a specific genre of music. The importance of background music in a film cannot be overstated. Background music is instrumental in creating the mood the movie maker wants to evoke. During the infancy of cinema, the importance of music was understood, but the relationship between music and the action on the screen was not fully appreciated. Thus, early musical material consisted of whatever was available and often bore little relationship to the movie. Since the technology for movies to include sound had not yet been developed, music was provided by live musicians who played whatever they wanted. A pianist good at improvisation was highly regarded. As the commercial potential of the cinema became apparent, producers realized the advantage of each film having its own music. In 1908, Camille Sanson was commissioned to compose music specifically for a French film. However, this idea was ahead of its time and was not embraced by the movie industry. Perhaps cinema musicians weren't ready to learn new pieces for each movie that came along, or perhaps the costs were too high. By 1913, special catalogs of music for specific dramatic purposes were available. Thus, musicians had at their disposal music that could be used for any scene from any movie. Much of this music consisted of works by famous composers and predated the advent of motion pictures. For example, Mendelssohn's Wedding March was a typical catalog piece for wedding scenes and had been written before the appearance of motion pictures. In 1922, a system that made possible the synchronization of recorded sound and image was developed. The era of talking pictures began, thus making music an integral part of filmmaking. At first, background music was used only if there was an orchestra or performer on screen, because it was believed that people would be bewildered about the origin of the sound. A 1930s western called Cimarron was the first film to experiment with background music without a visible means of production. The composer for this soundtrack was Max Steiner, a pioneer of film scoring. Steiner also composed the film score for Symphony of Six Million in 1932, the first film to have music underscoring dialogue. The simple, somewhat naive music of early film scores quickly developed into the sophisticated musical experience that moviegoers encounter today. And yeah, so the, that was the audio clip. And the questions are as follows. Um, the first qu question is, background music creates the mood of the movie producer wants. So it's a yes or no question. And then the second question is, in 1913, a special catalog for background music was available. Again, this is a yes or no question. And yeah, let's see what uh, the audience thinks. Okay, so for the first question, yes wins by 88%. Um, and for the second question, yes also wins by 64%. So let's see what the instructors think. Maybe we can start with Rahima. Sorry, there was a problem. I couldn't unmute myself. Yeah, uh, for the first question, I, I do agree with uh, our audience. It's definitely yes, um, because the producers want uh, th this mood, in, even in cinemas, as I mentioned, I suppose, I hope. And um, about the second question, I'm not sure, to be honest, but I would go with audience. I would say yes. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Yusuf. Okay. Um, I agree with both questions. Um, in the beginning, uh, it was mentioned that background music creates the mood that movie producers want. And somewhere in the middle, um, it did say that in 1913, a special catalog for background music was available. So I'd agree with the majority on both questions. 
Yep, me too. I, I agree with, uh, you know, I think he mentioned at the very beginning that the background music creates the mood for the movie producer. So that's a yes. And then in 1913, a special catalog for background music was available, which he also did mention that specifically. So that's a yes. Uh, so do I. Uh, obviously, the two questions was uh, were uh, mentioned in the OG. So I'm with the majority, of course. Maybe we can hear some more responses. Maybe Sir Paul. I, uh, the first question is definitely yes. The music creates the mood. The second question, I actually missed the year. I, I know that they mentioned um, that there was a special catalog available, but I missed what year he said. So I think the answer is yes for that one. 